Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor and privilege to be here this afternoon with you and have an opportunity uh, to give you some information and uh, some vision uh, how we are trying to forge the U.S.-Georgia strategic partnership, how the world power and the small new democracy in a quite remote region can work together and very successfully. And particularly, uh, I am honored to uh, speak on this issue here in Clinton School of Public Service because if you observe the uh, uh, history of uh, U.S.-Georgia uh, bilateral relations, uh, the first and the most significant steps been taken during President Clinton's uh, uh, administration. And his vision, uh, uh, which uh, uh, I quote him, uh, uh, which is very well described in his quote, where he, when he said, quoting, we cannot build our future without helping others to build theirs, is really gave its fruits and it's really working and it's absolutely true in case of U.S.-Georgia relations. And today we are pleased and honored to have a uh, real strategic partnership with the U.S. It's the strategic partnership is a very broad uh, term in itself, but it has very concrete and uh, uh, dimensions. Uh, uh, Georgia and the United States in January 2009 signed an U.S.-Georgia strategic partnership charter. It's an umbrella of political document which encompasses four major pillars and uh, uh, which are defense and security cooperation, economy and trade, democratic institution building, and people-to-people -people relations. Each four pillars are very important, and what we are trying to do now, uh, uh, while being on a stage of strategic partnership, to put as much substance under this umbrella political document as we can. Um, and there are a lot of positive results, and uh, I will try to uh, briefly elaborate on the results that already we have, and there are some challenges as well, which we are trying together with our major strategic partner to transform into the new opportunities. Uh, but going into the beginning, and one might ask, uh, uh, why a small remote country of uh, Georgia uh, is important for the United States, or why uh, we can label this partnership as a strategic partnership? Uh, the uh, simple answer is that uh, we share the same values. Uh, and many generations of Georgians been inspired by the freedom fighters in the United States, uh, and uh, many gave their lives for the freedom of our country. Unfortunately, this is true even now in Georgia case, because uh, the way and the path towards the uh, free uh, and democratic Georgia is not an easy one for us. But again, we are really glad to have you as a uh, strategic uh, partner. Uh, uh, Immanuel Kant once said, uh, you cannot be ready to be free until you are free. And it's absolutely right, again, in the case of Georgia. It, it took years for us, after we regained our independence when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, to make a really uh, steady progress in the direction of uh, free, uh, uh, transparent, market economy-oriented democratic country. Uh, and there was no book uh, that could teach us uh, how can we do it. Uh, but there was a lighthouse, and this lighthouse was uh, values. Uh, basic values, uh, freedom, democracy, human rights, uh, market economy. And that helped us uh, to navigate through the troubled waters um, and uh, also uh, the friendly support of the United States. And as I said in the beginning, the very strong steps been taken uh, after uh, President Clinton introduced his foreign policy agenda. And uh, Georgia was uh, you know, part uh, of this foreign policy agenda, and uh, since then our cooperation with the U.S. is steadily uh, increasing. Um, uh, now, what are the brief results? Uh, uh, briefly, the good results of our cooperation and where Georgia stands. Been uh, a post-Soviet country after the Soviet occupation of more than 70 years, uh, we inherited a very uh, heavy heritage of uh, Soviet uh, uh, economy system, uh, corrupted system of governance, uh, 
uh, total absence of um, the human rights protection system, total absence of any democratic institution. And uh, right now, Georg and Georgia was uh, with this heavy heritage almost on the verge of being a failed state. But uh, after the Rose Revolution, when our generation came to power, and it was really big responsibility and big honor for us to make this breakthrough in the history of our country, Today, uh, we can say that uh, Georgia is uh, uh, one of the uh, beacons of democracy in our region. Georgia uh, made the significant reforms in every dimension. Uh, World Bank just last year named Georgia as an uh, 11th in their doing business rating, and Georgia is uh, been named one of the least corrupted country. Uh, 26, the freest economy in the world, and 14th in Europe. Um, uh, Georgia is a country who is now able to contribute significantly to the, not to consume only the benefits of cooperation, but to be a contributor as well. And Georgia is a country who significantly contributes uh, to the international anti-terrorist operations. Georgia uh, was the third biggest troop contributor to the uh, Iraqi operation, and today Georgia is. Uh, number one per capita troop contributor to the Afghanistan ISAF operation. And all this uh, uh, was possible uh, due to the very uh, steady and strong support from uh, our uh, strategic partner. But doing reforms was not an easy thing to do, uh, especially when you had to transform the entire society. And reforms were all about the social transformation changing the attitude, changing the mentality, whether it's a political, economic, or in a, in a social field. And uh, with this social transformation, uh, of course, uh, individual members of our society were needs to be transformed. But of course, we needed the inspiration and we needed um, uh, support and assistance. And this process changed us individually. It, it made us res more responsible towards our partners. It made us to more responsible towards our country and towards each, each other. And we today see uh, the fruits of this cooperation. Of course, uh, this path was not easy. And of course, this path, uh, and we are not uh, uh, there yet. Uh, and our main challenge today is to make this process irreversible. And to make the process irreversible, you can design a nice uh, political system and the current uh, political environment, it can work, economy can work, but if there will be no uh, new generation upcoming with the new ideas and with uh, new vision, it will be impossible to make it sustained or make it irreversible. So that's why one of the major priorities today for us is an educational reform. Uh, and the uh, reform that will allow new generation to be more interoperable with their partners, to have an opportunity to introduce the new educational possibilities around the world and bring these ideas then back home to develop our country. Uh, uh, the important element, of course, in terms of having an uh, economy developing is the security. In terms of the uh, security, of course, uh, it, it was one of the biggest challenges ahead of us, but we conducted a significant reforms, particularly in the uh, law enforcement agencies. Again, with the her heavy heritage of the Soviet corrupted law enforcement agencies, it was not an easy process, and it was painful. It took some political courage to make steps, and the uh, Georgian police reform now is one of the exemplary cases when uh, uh, totally uh, distrusted uh, law enforcement institution is now the most trusted uh, public institution in the country. Uh, uh, it, it took uh, a, a lot of um, uh, courage to do this, but uh, uh, today uh, uh, we, we see the fruits of it. And the fact that uh, there is uh, minimal corruption and the Transparency International named Georgia um, uh, as the least corrupted country uh, makes uh, a lot of interest to foreign investors to come to Georgia and to invest in our economy. Of course, uh, while we created the secure environment for um, uh, investors, also uh, the legal environment was necessary to be supportive. And what we did is that uh, we chose the path of uh, liberalization of the market uh, environment. Today, Georgia has a uh, very low taxes, uh, and um, uh, it's a flat income tax like 15%. 
which probably might be 12 percent in uh, one year or so. Uh, we have only uh, six type of taxes introduced, and uh, this uh, and there are uh, particular areas, so-called the tax havens, where. Uh, all the economic activities are absolutely free of um, uh, duties. Uh, on the entire territory of Georgia, uh, all the uh, new technology or IT-related activities are uh, free of taxes. And uh, uh, when we started this endeavor, there was a, uh, some kind of criticism that uh, it might ruin the state income and we will not be able to support public spending. Uh, but uh, uh, this experiment gave its positive fruits and notwithstanding the global economic crisis and notwithstanding even the uh, 2008 um, uh, Russian invasion, Georgian economy is uh, doing quite good. We have 4.8, 4.9 economic growth and the uh, Georgian economy is uh, quite diverse, which made us resilient. And uh, the, the, that was our answer to our critics. Uh, to maintain this path, of course, we need a more steady uh, and secure environment. Uh, and this is the area, and most of our challenges, uh, we, we managed to transform into new opportunities, whether it was a, uh, economic reform, social reform, uh, political reform. But there is uh, one uh, area where uh, Besides our efforts, we need a very strong support from our partners, and this is a, uh, ensuring country security. Uh, as you might well heard, in 2008, uh, Russia invaded my country, and they still occupy uh, two parts, 20% of uh, our territory. We really do hope that uh, uh, this uh, uh, will be reverted quite soon, and we are uh, extremely happy to see that the world democracies are supporting us, and. Uh, United States in, in, is in lead in this process. Just recently, Secretary Clinton traveled to Georgia and she sent a clear signal to the occupant that occupation of the sovereign territory is unacceptable and the U.S. will uh, put a lot of efforts to uh, uh, restore Georgia's territorial integrity. That significantly encouraged us and we are looking forward to continue our very close work uh, in that direction. Of course, uh, 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 all these challenges are tests to our democracy and again the key recipe for the success and key recipe for uh, making all this um, uh, process working irreversibly is the democratic institution and democratic institution building. Uh, again, we've, uh, we, we faced a lot of challenges and we made some mistakes as well on this path, uh, but the, uh, with the uh, help of our friends, we made also analysis why these mistakes happened, so hopefully in the future we will not make these mistakes. Uh, therefore, the system is developing and we have uh, quite a strong uh, and steady development of democratic institutions. Uh, we have uh, a very uh, uh, good record of uh, running elections, especially particularly recent one, that was the local elections. Though local elections might not be very uh, politically interesting for uh, the, uh, the general audience, but uh, this particular election was important because it was a uh, testing um, uh, elections for the new electoral system that we put forward. The capital, uh, capital uh, city mayor was directly elected and there was a very broad participation in, in election from the opposition parties as well. That was a, quite an achievement and uh, we were encouraged when Secretary Clinton also uh, uh, remarked positively on Georgian elections and uh, uh, issued her, uh, her uh, support to further continue work in this direction. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, while um, uh, describing the different pillars of our strategic partnership, the, uh, one of the most important pillars is the people-to-people -people relation. And uh, I think whether it's a business-to-business -business or uh, educational cooperation, all these uh, are very strongly uh, standing on the uh, individual initiatives and people-to-people -people, uh, ties. And I do believe that uh, uh, you will, since you are already here and you have some interest in my country, 
you will explore a little bit more uh, my country and you will have an interest in particular areas. And of course, I am uh, more than glad uh, to support you in this endeavor. And please do if you have any questions on particular issues here or later on uh, through the electronic means of communication, I will be more than glad to provide this information. And the people-to-people -people relation, besides, of course, giving some practical results or practical uh, outcome, also uh, brings a lot of emotion uh, stimulus to the developing the strategic partnership. Uh, I've seen um, uh, Georgian soldiers in my previous capacity when I was in defense ministry, I've seen Georgian soldiers fighting uh, shoulder by shoulder together with the American soldiers in the, the hottest places uh, in the world and uh, Georgian soldiers are deployed there without any national caveat so they are engaged in a real tough battlefield and uh, besides the outcome of this operation there is a lot of personal ties between uh, Georgian military and American militaries, and this is a very strong ties that we have. Besides, of course, there is a lot of exchange programs, a lot of educational programs, and this is the strongest and the most significant factor that will make our strategic partnership uh, work uh, solidly and work effectively. So, in conclusion, uh, again, uh, uh, the, describing the brief messages that I wanted to share with you is that uh, while we are uh, uh, developing our strategic partnership with the United States, of course, important is to put this on a track of irreversibility. And for this, we definitely need security. For the security, we need democratic institutions, we need the continuous reforms, we need economic process, uh, prosperity, we need uh, inclusiveness, we need transparency, uh, and of course we need uh, uh, people engaged in the process of governing country and taking responsibility. Here, of course, uh, um, I uh, would like, in conclusion also, to thank uh, uh, American people for the uh, uh, constant help and assistance toward Georgia, and particularly I would like to mention the hardest period in our recent history, uh, 2008 war with Russia, when uh, U.S. military ships and U.S. military planes delivered the so much needed uh, humanitarian assistance to Georgian people. And it was not only about the humanitarian assistance, but it was more the uh, psychological uh, stimulus that reinforced the country from the, uh, and the population. And also I would like to thank you uh, for the one billion assistance package that was initiated by uh, Senator uh, Biden, Vice President Biden now, and this uh, uh, one billion assistance package helped us to remove most of the consequences of the war, to restore all the infrastructure, made country to continue to run in a normal pace, and also uh, to accommodate the uh, uh, refugees as a result of the war and to create a normal conditions for them. Of course, the challenge is remaining. Of course, uh, the problems are there. We have an uh, occupying force who controls 20% uh, of our territory, and we think that in 21st century it's inadmissible to have this uh, type of uh, uh, presence on our territory, but uh, hopefully with um, uh, uh, and them, uh, with, with support of our partners, we will remove all the impediments towards the development of our country. Uh, today we have no other uh, ways but to respond with the more reforms, more engagement, uh, more international presence, and of course uh, we have to make Georgia democracy flourish, though it is a flourishing uh, under the gunpoint, but again uh, the containment of this problem is very important. And uh, once again, um, uh, I'm uh, absolutely uh, happy to be here with you. I'm really happy to see uh, such a distinguished audience. And I'm very much looking forward to your questions uh, on particular issues that I mentioned during my introductory speech. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a great presentation. A young ambassador in a young country doing some great stuff. Okay, let's, uh, let's ask questions. Um, clearly, uh, there's one right here, Dewey, coming right at you. Bob's right behind you. Uh, hello, ambassador. Is this on? Can you hear me? It's not on yet. Try it again. Hello? Ooh, there you go. There we go. No? No, okay. 
Okay, anyway, I am a student here at the Clinton School. My name's Andrew Morgan. Here you go, take, take this one. Okay. Thanks, sorry about that. Um, Andrew Morgan, I'm a Clinton School student, and I just want to thank you very much for coming and being with us. We really appreciate the, uh, the privilege of having you here. Um, in your presentation, you mentioned some, the importance of education reform, and I wondered if you could go into some more detail about some of the education initiatives in your country, and also when you mentioned the people-to-people -people relationship, some of the educational cooperation that you have between our country and yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for this question, and I think right now in our reform agenda, education reform is the most important and the most strategic uh, direction. Um, as I said, the main lighthouse for us in terms of moving in the troubled waters uh, is the, the, the values and set of values that our society shares. So for us to achieve the, uh, this goal, of course, we, we need uh, more interoperability. Uh, and interoperability has different dimensions. This is the first of all, the political interoperability, having the political system that is based on the same principles, checks and balances, uh, the, the public participation. But of course, uh, we need individuals, individuals who share these values, individuals who will take responsibility for developing the system. And in this case, of course, the uh, investment in the uh, young generation is the key factor. Uh, in terms of the educational reform, we are now targeting, we again, as always, uh, have a very ambitious agenda, and we are targeting uh, every stage of education, uh, whether it's a primary education, or, um, uh, or uh, mid-level education or higher education. So the project that we are running right now uh, under the uh, educational reform is first uh, uh, starting with the uh, main, main element of interoperability. This is the English language training. Uh, we just launched a, a project which is called uh, uh, Learn and Study Together with Georgia. Uh, this is a project of uh, uh, labeled as 1,000 teachers, uh, uh, and we already have some 300 U.S. English teachers who came to Georgia, and they are uh, teaching English in different public schools around Georgia. Uh, we think that this is a very important, first of all, because, uh, of course, our uh, new generation in the uh, elementary school will have possibility to start English language training from the beginning, from the native speaker, but also they will be introduced the history and the culture of the United States, and that will bring our uh, societies much more clo uh, uh, closer than they are today. Besides, of course, we are trying to uh, implement additional programs for the young uh, children. Uh, let's say any first grader who enters the school, they are getting a um, uh, laptop computer and every public school is getting the internet that will allow them to have a, a way much more information than I used to have when I was in the school. <laughs> and it was a Soviet time when I was in the school. So I'm not uh, young anymore. <laughs> Uh, yes, we have a question right here. But uh, just to finish also, parallelly what we are doing is, and I had already uh, quite many meetings with different um, uh, prominent U.S. educational institutions, uh, Stanford, uh, Harvard, Yale University, uh, Penn State University, to establish a branch campuses of those universities in Georgia. Uh, USAID conducted a very strong um, uh, and quite an extensive uh, feasibility study, and it revealed a very big demand on the high quality uh, educational institutions, not only in Georgia, but in the region as well, um, uh, in the South Caucasus or the wider understanding of our region. And uh, implementation of this project will significantly boost also the intellectual capability of our nation. Uh, besides uh, this type of projects, of course, there are a lot of faculty-to-faculty uh, -faculty relations, and there is uh, a lot of exchange programs that brings the different scholars and different uh, uh, individuals to get an education in particular fields. And uh, uh, under the people-to-people -people relation working group uh, on the strategic partnership charter, one of the major issue, uh, and this second meeting will be conducted in the 6th of October, will be discussed. It will be the educational uh, programs, bilateral educational programs with the U.S.
Did I hear you say that uh, you had taxation in only six areas? Uh, and I was wondering exactly what the areas were because that sounds very innovative. And also I was wondering what your major exports were and major crops. Uh, well, uh, first of all, in terms of the uh, uh, taxation, we have a very liberal uh, tax system. Uh, I can leave some uh, papers in the detail describing it, but I said we have a, a flat income tax, which is the 15%. Uh, there are uh, 0.5 or 1% taxes on the different um, uh, uh, areas, including the property tax is 0.1 or something near to this. Um, uh, any uh, investment or any activity in the IT or high-tech technology is totally tax-free. Uh, there is a uh, free trade zone near the major seaport uh, on the Black Sea, and this is also totally tax-free. So um, uh, the, the taxation of, uh, uh, and all this, uh, besides the income tax, all the other taxes are minimal, like 1%, 2%, something around. Um, uh, concerning the export, uh, again, Georgia has no uh, hydrocarbon resources, neither oil or gas, uh, which is good uh, because it uh, helped our economy to be more diverse. Uh, so, starting from the agriculture, mining, um, uh, steel production, and touristic um, uh, infrastructure, all these fields are very uh, actively developing. So, our exports are the agricultural products. Uh, among agricultural products, uh, one of the, my favorite is Georgian wine, uh, which is now coming to the U.S. market as well. Maybe you don't know, but uh, all the archaeological or the historical researches show that the oldest uh, winemaking of the, um, the human being was found on the territory of Georgia. So Georgia is considered as a cradle of the wine. So we, we, we donated one of the best products to the world. <laughs> Uh, but, of course, uh, we are developing very significantly also different functions for our country. One of these functions are being a hub of all the regional activities. Hub for the transportation of goods and services, east and to the west. Uh, this concept of the ancient Silk Road, which is uh, quite active today as well. As an example, I can tell you that uh, uh, almost 50% of non-lethal cargo that goes to the Afghanistan is going through Georgia. Uh, Georgian seaport, Georgian territory through railway, and then Central Asia into Afghanistan. Um, besides this, uh, we are trying to develop concept of being an educational hub. And uh, as, as the paramount also, as, as a function uh, of the, our country, we would like to uh, promote the, uh, Georgia as an uh, exemplary case of the democratic transformation in our region. And sometimes maybe uh, those who do not want us to be successful would like to see you know, we've been punished for our choice. But uh, with, again, with the support of our partners, uh, this, is, this is working and economy is uh, strong. By the way, as an example also, I can tell you that touristic infrastructure is developing very rapidly in Georgia. Now we have a, uh, almost all major hotel chains, uh, starting from Kempinski, Four Seasons, Hyatt, Radisson, um, uh, Hilton, building the hotels in Georgia. That's a quite a uh, solid uh, sign of uh, the progress. Uh, so this is, uh, that's briefly what is happening in Georgia. Here. Good afternoon, Mr. Ambassador. My name is Nathaniel Owen. I'm a Clinton School student here. My question is about corruption. Uh, corruption is one of the major obstacles to the development of so many countries around the world. Uh, and yet Georgia has done a remarkable job in uh, tackling this problem. Could you, I know you talked about it briefly in your remarks, but could you go into a little more thorough discussion about the steps that your country took in tackling corruption? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, 
fighting corruption is uh, and was the, the most serious challenge that uh, we encountered in our country because the, the system that we, we inherited uh, was based on the corruption. And it was not individual cases, but it was a, a system that was functioning under the corruption, starting from the law enforcement and all the governmental agencies. And we took a few major steps. First of all, we removed uh, most of the regulations um, and we minimized the bureaucratic burden on the business. And all the uh, regulations being used as a source for the corruption. Uh, that was the first major step. Second uh, major step was um, uh, making the public service more effective, those which remain with the training and providing the, uh, 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 more education to the public servants. Second, uh, the third important step was the fighting corruption in the law enforcement agencies. And that was not an easy step to do as well, because uh, one thing we did, and uh, you can see it in many uh, other post-Soviet uh, states maybe, uh, that uh, the road police, that was a major source of corruption, which, and they had a daily interaction with the, our citizens, bribing on every corner them and extorting money. So what we did is that we uh, released uh, 60,000 uh, traffic police in one day. There was a huge criticism at that time, uh, some of our supporters as well, saying that uh, it would uh, backlash us and it's a, uh, socially very painful, but we saw that there was no other way to deal with the problem. Um, uh, Parallelly, what we did, uh, and when we released this corrupted uh, uh, traffic police, uh, nothing happened at all. Even the uh, daily traffic was uh, better than they, it used to be before. <laughs> <laughs> so well, uh, then what we did is that uh, we started a new recruitment cycle, uh, but of course we gave an opportunity of the, those who've been fired to uh, reapply for um, and, uh, of course, we provide some training capabilities for them. And now we have one of the most trusted uh, um, police force uh, in our country, and our example of police reform is now is, uh, <coughs> considered to be used particularly for the Afghan national police training, and we offer this uh, possibility uh, to the U.S. and to uh, the Afghan government as well. Um, one interesting case that happened after uh, we recruited the new police forces, after one year we conducted a survey of, again, um, the violations by the police officers, and 95% of these violations were done, those old policemen who were re-recruited in the police force. So again, it was another uh, confirmation that we did the right thing. Uh, besides, of course, uh, all this effort that we put together uh, to fight the corruption, the key is transparency. And we made all the, uh, uh, the governmental processes, whether it's a, the, the privatization process or decision-making process, as transparent as we can. We are still moving in that direction, and uh, we still have some cases, but now it's individual cases and it's not part of the system. And that's why, as I said, Transparency International uh, named uh, Georgia as one of the uh, uh, biggest fighters of the corruption. There was a public survey conducted uh, on the question of uh, public perception of corruption. And the question was to the individuals who participated in the survey, whether you or anybody you know had an uh, interaction with the corrupting case. And there was 0 0.8 uh, public perception of the corruption. Uh, of course, uh, uh, corruption is a problem that you cannot be satisfied to deal with, because once you stop continuing this reform process, you will uh, backslide. So we are constantly uh, trying to implement new methods, new procedures, and uh, increase the transparency. Uh, Ambassador, I read that um, President Saakashvili had appointed a 28-year-old woman to be your um, economics minister, and she had previously lived in Canada and had worked in a bakery. Um, we, I know that Saakashvili is a favorite of the United States, and I think he and President Clinton have some things in common uh, in their fondness for the female gender, but how in the world can we take Georgia and Saakashvili seriously if he is going to appoint someone who seems completely unqualified? 
Uh, uh, whether somebody is qualified or not, uh, we have to judge by the results. So I would avoid any prejudgment. And this lady was just recently appointed. And we can judge maybe after one year what she achieved. Uh, though she was qualified, she was not working in the bakery, but she, it was her family business. And she was uh, developing this business, helping her father. But she has an adequate education. But again, I would uh, like um, uh, to say that any prejudgment is really uh, not the wise thing to do, particularly having in mind that when the President Saakashvili became president, he was uh, 36 years old. And the rest of the government was younger than um, himself. Uh, we had a defense minister who was 20, uh, 28 year old and uh, uh, other ministries. And when I joined uh, uh, the President Saakashvili's team, also I was somewhere 29 year old. And frankly, we've seen a lot of prejudgment of us saying that, yeah, you are a bunch of the kids. You don't know what you are doing. Somebody called us even Georgia's kindergarten government. But again, let's, let's judge everything by, <clears throat> by the results. And the results are what I named here. And we've done this in uh, four or five years of uh, doing extensive reforms. So uh, in terms of the, uh, our economy minister, uh, I would be glad to have uh, the same opportunity after one year here in the same room. And we can judge about uh, the performance of Georgian economy, which is performing quite OK now. But hopefully, it will do better as well. Uh, yes, let's right here. Welcome to the Clinton School Ambassador. I'm Jessica Rice, class of 2012 here. Um, so we'd like to thank you. You were talking about Georgia being a hub for many things in your region. I was wanted to ask you to paint a picture of Georgia, and we know about the occupation with Russia, but some of the other countries around Armenia and Azerbaijan. What are your relations and how would you like to see those improve or change in the future? Well, uh, thank you for this question, because this uh, uh, issue that you mentioned uh, is the foundation of our ambition to be a regional hub, because we, we enjoy extremely good relations with all our neighbors, but our northern neighbor. Though even we have an excellent relations with the uh, uh, neighboring regions who are the Russian uh, regions, but still with the people-to-people -people ties we are still maintaining. But of course, we have an excellent relation with Azerbaijan, with Armenia, with Turkey, though they have some problems uh, in their bilateral relations. So this naturally gives us the uh, possibility to claim and to have an ambitious uh, goal to be a regional hub for many things, whether it's an economic activity, social, cultural, etc. And plus, of course, um, uh, historically, Georgia was a center of uh, uh, regional activities in, in many ways, and uh, right now, especially with uh, the very uh, effective and very ambitious uh, transformation and ambitious goals we have uh, in terms of the democratic transformation, first of all, again, we think that we have a, a moral high ground to claim to be a regional hub on many dimensions. Yes, we have a question. Right behind, yes, two, both the women right there. We'll just take one and the other one. Um, uh, my question is 3.1% of Georgia's GDP is spent on education versus 5.3% of the U.S.'s GDP towards education. Based on this, how do you think Georgia will compete against the U.S. and other nations in the future from a business and economic standpoint? Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't get, can, can oh. say a bit loudly. Yeah. Okay. 3.1% um, of Georgia's GDP is spent on education versus 5.3% of the U.S.'s GDP towards education. Based on this, how do you think Georgia will compete against the U.S. and other nations in the future from a business and economic mm -hmm. standpoint? Okay, very good question. Uh, I, I cannot give you exact number of the percent of, of GDP uh, we spend, but I can tell you what is the, our educational system. And we have a uh, public uh, uh, school uh, system in Georgia. 
and of course there is the, the private educational uh, institutions as well. But uh, each stage, of course, provides uh, the, the government provides the uh, possibility of getting education uh, free of charge. In terms of the spendings, uh, the, the budget is increasing every year because of the strategic importance of the education of Finland in Georgia. And in terms of uh, competition, the, uh, the, our concept, uh, and I, I've been asked this question also about the, in terms of the re, uh, regional, how we would uh, compete with our regional countries like Turkey, Azerbaijan, or other countries. Uh, and our concept is different. We do not want to compete. We would like to be cooperative. And uh, today, uh, in the globalized world, you cannot isolate yourself from any process. You have to be part, and you have to open your system for others also uh, to participate. So while claiming to be an educational hub, of course, we are not trying to create these educational capabilities only for Georgians or Georgian citizens, but it will be open for anybody and in the regional countries as well. That would uh, give us possibility to be interoperable on the global scale, to develop language skills, whether the Asian languages or European languages, and that is uh, the, the benefit that uh, we all can get out of it. Right now in Georgia, let's say in Georgian medical institutions, you can find uh, a lot of uh, students from India, from Pakistan, and they are coming to get an education. The main reason is that uh, it's quite cheap for them, regionally quite close. So it's not about competition. It's more about the interoperability and inclusion. Yes, right, right there. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Hanya Kureshi, and I'm a student at Pulaski Academy. And my question for you is, how do you believe that the agreement to facilitate economic growth that Georgia signed on August 12, 2010 will benefit both your country and the US? The, which one would be signed? Um, the one to facilitate economic growth that you signed on August 12, 2010. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, well, uh, as I said, uh, uh, for Georgian economy to grow, uh, the important uh, is to have a secure environment, first of all, and of course to have a uh, very favorable legal environment within the country, and of course, um, uh, enough adequate human capacity to absorb the, the demand of, uh, from the market. Uh, and as I said, we have already quite a significant achievement in this regard. And um, in terms of the security, we have uh, uh, the major uh, deterrent factor not to have further deteriorate our uh, security threats and challenges because of the international presence, because of international companies being involved in Georgia, uh, because of the major international uh, investors coming in Georgia, and the most of the economic growth in Georgia is now FDI, foreign direct investment driven. Uh, and the fact is that uh, even uh, after war with Russia, uh, we still have uh, a uh, few major Russian companies who are still doing business in Georgia and quite happily. And if you ask the CEOs of these businesses, they would uh, not move their business anywhere because they feel absolutely happy. Though initial instinct might be that, okay, now we have to get rid from the Russian capital because you know, they are world is Russia. But we did just the opposite. We, we remained on, on track of our commitment to be transparent uh, to the market principles. And whoever comes to invest in the country, uh, without any political label, they are free to do so. And all the um, agreements that are, are followed under this, uh, of course, are very important. And as I said, starting from the one billion assistance package or um, other uh, uh, assistance agreements that we are signing with our partners is very important. We have now Millennium Challenge Corporation who is finalizing its first compact in Georgia. And uh, if you ask um, uh, the leadership of Millennium Challenge Corporation which project is the best uh, in, in their record, they will definitely tell you Georgia because uh, every penny uh, was spent uh, very transparently and to the particular needs of the regional projects that we developed. And we did not use this money only for our uh, country purposes, but for more wider regional perspective. That was a uh, infrastructural project that brought up the economic activity significantly. And besides us benefiting from this money, of course, the US is getting uh, uh, paybacks. And this is uh, increased uh, 
um, uh, infrastructural capacity in Georgia that allows a lot of cargo very safely to go and to support U.S. troops in Afghanistan. So there are many dimensions uh, how we are trying to utilize the U.S. assistance, not only for our benefit, but for our regional benefit, and of course, those who are donating this money for us. Yes, ma'am, right here. Hello. My name is Nadia Safar and I'm a student at Pulaski Academy. My question is, how do you believe Georgia's pending entrance into NATO will affect the war against Russia? Very painful question. <laughs> uh, mm, uh, 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 the part of our uh, reform process, uh, especially in the mm, uh, uh, military field, but not only in military field, was to achieve the uh, standards and interoperability with NATO. And we declared that NATO membership was one of the primary foreign policy goals for us. And uh, till the war uh, uh, with Russia, we were doing uh, quite an extensive reforms. And NATO uh, provided uh, very effective tools for us uh, to conduct these reforms. We had individual partnership action plan, so-called IPAP, uh, that encompassed the reform agenda uh, in uh, military, uh, security, economic, and democratic uh, dimensions. And it was not just a wish list, but it was an action plan with the individuals responsible for particular uh, reforms and particular deliverables. And we made a significant progress in this. Everybody in NATO, if you go and ask uh, uh, NATO international staff, they will uh, confirm that Georgia made a, a huge progress in this regard, and Georgia was qualified to get membership action plan. Uh, that was the next step of engagement with NATO. But unfortunately, then some uh, political factors intervened, and in uh, NATO Bucharest summit, Georgia was refused to get membership action plan. That was a quite a wrong signal sent to uh, Russian Federation, which they in interpreted differently. They interpreted it like Georgia being abandoned, and uh, now it's time to launch a war. And again, this, this same summer, uh, they started war with us. Uh, but um, of course, uh, while there was some emotional frustration of not getting membership action plan, which we think we deserved at that moment, we are still continuing our reform process. Because again, we are not doing these reforms to please NATO or any particular uh, country, but we are doing for our country. And we believe that what we are doing under the NATO agenda is beneficial to our uh, uh, own security. And we see clearly the results, because our troops are one of the most effective troops uh, operating uh, on the ground in the hottest areas. And uh, as a uh, deputy minister, I received a letter from the US troop leadership saying that Georgians are one of the best troops after the US troops on, the, uh, on those operations. And these are the particular results. And NATO membership is still remain in our agenda. We are still continuing our, our reforms. And we do hope that at some point, uh, the political uh, situation will be absolutely favorable for us to getting uh, NATO membership. Because right now we are, uh, and NATO membership is not only the consuming the net security, but also to contribute. And Georgia is now significantly contributing to the net security for the Euro-Atlantic area. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking the ambassador for being here today. Thank you.